Emily Clark, Project Officer, Wildlife Protection for Tweed Shire Council. I live in and love the Tweed, and I'm passionate about our native wildlife and their habitats. Cane toads were introduced into the Northern Rivers and have spread south along the coast of New South Wales as far as Port Macquarie. They are now fairly established in the Tweed and are a serious threat to our native wildlife. This is why Council has engaged specialists, water gum, to help reduce their numbers, slow the spread and give our native wildlife a better chance. Unfortunately, local councils don't have the people power to effectively manage cane toad populations. We can't do it on our own. So we're asking the community to get on board and work with Council to reduce the numbers in the Tweed. Together we can achieve more. With water gum, we can support the community and provide the information needed on the best, safest and most humane ways to tackle the toads. Toad bus are a great opportunity to connect as a community, meet like-minded people, get exercise and do something positive for your community and environment. Always remember, if you're not sure if it's a cane toad, don't harm it. It might actually be a native frog. Catch it safely or take a photo and report it to your local council for identification. Hi, my name is Emily and I work for Watergun, an environmental not-for-profit based on the Gold Coast. And this past year, we've been working with Tweed Shire Council to combat cane toads in the region. Cane toads arrived in Australia from their native Southern America in 1935. There was originally just 102 of them, and now there's over 2 billion in Australia today. Cane toads are problematic in Australia. First of all, they are highly toxic. They have big toxic glands on the back of their necks, and any animal that tries to predate them is likely going to be killed as a result. They also have insatiable appetites. They can eat hundreds of insects per night, and if cane toads are eating all these insects, then there's no insects left for our native species. Cane toads also breed at an alarming rate. Each female can have two clutches a year, and each clutch can contain up to 35,000 babies. So that's 70,000 babies a year per female. This is why they're spreading at such an insatiable rate around Australia. The toad's toxin is also a problem for humans. People are worried about touching cane toads, particularly about their children and their pets. If a dog licks a cane toad and gets the toxin in its mouth, they can die very quickly. So it's important that we take these toads out of the environment where they can't harm your children and your pets. So what can the community do to start impacting cane toads? The first thing you can do is to get out there and start collecting the fertile adults before they have a chance to breed. All you need to go out and collect cane toads is a bucket, some gloves, maybe a pickup stick to save your back, and some determination. If you regularly collect cane toads from your gardens and your local area, you can actually have a really big impact on that local population. And remember, each female that you remove from the environment is potentially 70,000 babies that year that you're preventing. And every male that you remove from the environment is every female that he's mated with. So even collecting five toads goes a long, long way. So Watergum and Tweed Shire Council really encourage you to be humane with your toad collecting. We want you to euthanize your toads in the most humane way that is available to the general public, which is the fridge freezer method. The fridge freezer method involves a 24 hour period of cooling of your toads prior to putting them in the freezer. Cooling your toads for up to 24 hours causes them to slip into a comatose state called torpor. Once they're in this state, their pain receptors are shut off and they can't feel the pain of being frozen when they're later put in the freezer. Please be humane to cane toads. It's not their fault they're here. They were put on this continent by us and they're just trying to survive like anything else. So what do you do with your toads once they're frozen? Well, there's a number of things. You can drop them off at a drop-off station. Go to the website to find out where they are. You can also put them in your weekly rubbish collection. And finally, they make excellent compost. You just need to make sure you bury them deep so that animals can't dig them up and eat them. Before you start toad busting, it's super important that your ID skills are up to scratch because we don't want you to accidentally remove any native frogs from the environment. Cane toads have large paratoid glands on the back of their necks and you will be able to see these on every cane toad. Cane toads also have horizontal goat-like eyes. Another way to tell the difference between cane toads and frogs is their angry expression. So keep an eye out for these key features when you're looking for cane toads. 
So how do you tell cane toads apart from native frogs at each life stage? Cane toad eggs are really different from frog eggs. Frog eggs will be in lumps of jelly or foam. Cane toad eggs are in long jelly strings. And if you see them in the water, pull them out. That is the easiest stage to control cane toads. Cane toad tadpoles can be a little bit more tricky to tell apart from native frogs. Cane toad tadpoles are jet black in color and they have a clear frill to their tail, which makes their tails look quite short in relation to their body. They also have quite a pointed face and this is to do with the eye positioning on them and that strong brow developing even when they're just tiny tadpoles. If you do see cane toad tadpoles in a water body, you can get them out with a net, you can use tadpole traps, but just be certain that they are definitely cane toad tadpoles. You can always contact Watergum to ask for ID confirmation. The morph stage of a cane toad is where ID mistakes are often made. Australia has lots of very small species of native frog that look just like tiny cane toads. So this is somewhere where you wanna be really familiar. Tiny cane toads are black when they come out of the water, but they'll quickly develop coloring, and this can really vary. They can be stripy, they can be spotty. The best thing that you can do to perfect your ID skills is go to our website and read our comprehensive ID guide. The other thing that you can do is join frog ID groups on Facebook and similar. There are ID requests sent in constantly, and the more pictures you see, the better your skills will get. If you are unsure, please leave it alone. It's a lot less damaging to leave a cane toad in the environment than it is to remove a native frog. For the past year, we've been running some community toad busting sessions in the Tweed Shire to get people started. These sessions have been a fantastic community effort with lots of people coming out and collecting hundreds of cane toads and removing them from the environment. Hi. Uh, I'm Richard Roberts, I'm a Tweed local. I've lived here for four and a half years now. Very good place to live. A lot of people on the peninsula have been involved in cane toad hunts. We get a lot, it's amazing how prolific they are, but we probably need to do more to rid us of the cane toads because they are really bad for most other wildlife. If you're thinking of getting involved in a cane toad bust, you really are doing a lot to look after native fauna. That's the end reward. But look, it is a lot of fun, seriously a lot of fun. We've had 35 people here one night, all ages, a lot of young people. The young ones are usually more agile than us oldies, so they catch more cane toads. It's rewarding to come and it's fun as well. I'm Kate McKenzie. I live at Fingal on this beautiful peninsula and I'm a founder of the Fingal Head Coast Care Group. I've been to two cane toad buffs and they're surprisingly enjoyable. Just something a little bit different to what we normally do and also it has the benefits getting rid of a feral species that will be poisoning our native animals. It's very satisfying to think that there is a way that we can make a difference to the cane toad population which is affecting the native animal population. Once you've learned these skills, then take them home to your area and maybe set up a toad busting group in your street. Even if you just go out toad busting once a month, you are gonna have a great impact on your local population. If you remove those fertile adults, you're gonna stop the breeding next year. This is gonna make your dogs safer. This is gonna be a nicer environment for your children and your families and your gardens. It's really difficult for councils to get funding for cane toads in their area. So if you reside in the Tweed Shire, you're actually really lucky because Tweed Shire is doing something about cane toads and they're trying to have a positive impact for their community and their environment. So as you can see, just by putting in that little bit of effort, it can really go a long way and have such a positive impact on Australia, Australian people, their pets and wildlife.